So my name is Vish Vishwanath. I'm a professor at the Harvard School of Public Health and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. Uh, I focus my research on communications and social change with a particular focus on two things. One, communications uh, and how it can be used to you know, address uh, uh, health disparities and two, uh, how do we translate evidence base to promote social change and inform policymakers and practitioners. Uh, but I am also a part of this Curve Consortium where we are working together with MC Sachi team as well as uh, from Dimagi uh, to look at uh, uh, how rapid feedback mechanisms and the very idea of RFM can be introduced um, into uh, intervention space. And how do we do that? What are the challenges in doing it? And how do we promote it? in the community of practice and among donors. The challenge, uh, so in, in, in doing rapid feedback mechanisms is to decide what exactly should this feedback look like. And the idea here is that we do some kind of data collection and those data on how the project or intervention is working are then fed back to the organization so that they can use those data or that feedback to improve their performance or improve their interventions. And if you continue to do that at a greater pace, the hope is that over a period of time, as you work on it iteratively, the interventions become more effective and, uh, and, and then that could potentially lead to better outcomes and stronger outcomes. The question uh, then is, you know, how do you collect that feedback? Uh, what are the data that, are require, that is required to, to provide that kind of a feedback? Uh, and at what point can you feel confident enough that the data you collected uh, are good enough to promote that change and innovation and improve. Uh, so what I discussed today on behalf of the Curve Consortium team is how do you collect these data, uh, which we, in other words, also call evidence, and what are the different criteria and research designs we use to demonstrate that this evidence is strong enough uh, and useful enough for different uh, frontline workers so that they can use it. The issue then is after collecting this data and analyzing this data, how do we make it useful? And this requires thinking about the audiences or potential users for these for this evidence. Uh, and that, that means thinking through the use case for this evidence and then adopting it so that people can uh, you know, use it appropriately. Uh, the challenge always is you know, what kind of design, research design is appropriate, uh, what is considered acceptable, uh, uh, and, and how can you maintain the balance between agility and rapidity of collecting those data, but yet making sure that these data are robust and, and valid and reliable so that you can make decisions with some degree of confidence. I think one question is what kind of evidence and what kind of research designs are needed for different kinds of interventions which are using rapid feedback mechanisms. Uh, there is no single design or no single type of datum uh, that can be used for all kinds of interventions. So we need to come up with some kind of a categorization or taxonomy or at least some rules of thumb, decision rules, that could be potentially useful for people and practitioners, I think. So that's one question. Second, having collected these data, 
how do you communicate to different audiences? Um, I think uh, I made the distinction that there are three interrelated parts, but they are distinct parts. One is data, two is information, and three is communication. So how do you convert these data into information that is useful? And then how do you communicate that information to different audiences? So these are some of the questions we really need to take into consideration as we move forward in this field.